So it's week two of the Make Stuff 2021 challenge, and this week I've been doing a deep dive into the graphic novel and trying to make some headway with it. I had some false starts with the graphic novel last week, and I didn't want to get into a bad headspace with that project, so I decided to like conquer my fears and draw some pages this week. I thought I'd go over um, what I'm working on and the process that I use for drawing and inking very quickly here. I started with a splash page just to sort of get my head into the world and try to just capture like what this world is all about in a single image. And, and then I started to get into sequential art and trying to tell the story with comic panels. There are a lot of different themes that I'm playing with in this story, but I'm trying to include all of the carnage that's been going on lately so I'm dealing a lot with um, with the notion of fire uh, wildfires specifically and there's some tension and this thing is is now bent all the way over and then one of its little tentacles touches the grass and this wildfire starts and spreads as this weird techno device kind of uproots itself and maybe flies away unclear in this sort of crucifix formation. Um, I think this will, this is going to evolve into something with specific meaning as the story progresses. But then, so then you have these huge wildfires, but they are partitioned from the, the humanoid world by these huge walls, these huge barriers, but the human world is completely decimated and kind of paved over to protect themselves from the wildfires. Um, but then the humans also have these, uh, you know, these external devices that they're tethered to. And then, and then we sort of get into the interaction between these beings. And, uh, and you realize that the, the devices sort of communicate with each other, and the beings do too, but there's this sort of doom radius that surrounds them, and, and when, they're, when their doom radiuses overlap, there's these sort of psychic warning messages that occur. So this is sort of my attempt to play off of the COVID and the, the, the distancing, the social distancing, but this is a world where um, there's a sort of a, a permanent life or death struggle if, if, if your doom radius gets uh, too close to another inhabitant's doom radius. So the technique that I'm using for these pages is very fast and loose and I'm, I'm really just throwing down pencils like I'm trying to pencil an entire page in, in less than a half an hour. So here we have this like conversation that's going to ensue between these two people and uh and we know we need the tethers so uh, so i just kind of like you know slap these tether lines in and this is kind of a deep perspective like a deep one point perspective uh that's like a worm's eye view so the vanishing point is somewhere down here i don't get too hung up on exactly where the vanishing point is but it's really nice to sort of know that and then you can see that like even though these are organic forms they should really sort of obey the um you know the the general perspective and I, I tend to sort of um actually I'm gonna have this guy's like knees kind of bent. He's gonna be doing this sort of like weird pose. But I move really, really fast and loose with the pencils. I'm really just trying to get like an idea of like how these dudes are positioned. And so you can see like in a matter of like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, I've sort of got this other human figured out. Um, I tend to sort of draw in boxes. I, I kind of think of everything as like these geometric shapes it helps me sort of uh, identify the the foreshortening of the forms and then I go back and, and and I take these boxes that I drew and then I, I start to like 
you know, figure out what the actual materials are. So, you know, this is like, these dudes wear hoodies, of course. Like, all my dudes wear hoodies, pretty much. Because <laughs> it's really all I've worn since, uh, since like, 1990. Yeah, 1990. Um, yeah, the techies did not invent the hoodie. Um, hoodies were around way before techies. I'm living proof. I wore hoodies several years before I even owned a computer or ever used the internet. Um, but you can see that I'm just, I'm almost carving out the shapes and, and that's how I draw. And, you know, I'll go spend a total of like f five, maybe 10 minutes on this panel. This is a big panel too. So it's going to take up most of the page. And then I have room down here for a couple more panels or a set of three panels. Um, but there's going to be a third figure approaching here. So I kind of want to like, I want to kind of like get this third figure locked down. He's, he's. He's in the distance, so he's going to be mostly like in silhouette. Um, and he's got the tethers too. And he's got his like, uh, he's got his exocortex. There I said it. Um, actually, I think I kind of want multiple figures approaching. It seems a little more ominous. Maybe there's um, a confrontation that's about to go down. And that's it. That's how I draw. This panel is pretty much penciled. And then for inking, I've pretty much just doing, I've been doing like point Oh, I've been doing O2 Pigma pens, which is a, this is actually a, a pretty fine point. And just to show you, like, I try not to put much thought into the inks either. There's a, um, a danger of just treating, like, everything too precious. And so I try to move fast. I find that, like, the faster I move, the, um, the more expressive the lines are. So... Hands take me a while, so I'm gonna have to figure the hands out a little more. Um, and then they have these like sort of undershirts. And then this is sort of the side seam, but it needs to be kind of like crazy too. And I can go back and fix some of this stuff. Like this is not None of this is set in stone, even though I've inked it. I've got plenty of opportunities and methods for going back and cleaning some of this stuff up. But I should, I suppose I should spend a little more time figuring out exactly like um, what kind of boots these are. At first I thought they were like rubber boots, but now they're like a little more sophisticated than rubber boots, but but you get the idea. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's no secrets. It's just move fast. Don't think too hard about it. Try to get the proportions were roughly in place with the pencils, and then I do a lot of solving the line work um, with with my inks. Now, I could probably move a little slower with this and put a little more thought into it. But the truth is, there's not a huge difference between spending, for me anyway, between spending 10 hours on a page and two hours. Um, if anything, the 10 hours I spend on a page usually ends up kind of killing the spontaneity of the line and I overwork everything. And I really just like the kinetic energy that I get in these really fast sort of um, situations. And then this is my other dude. Um,
hands are always really hard. So I often end up needing to fix my hands in Photoshop, but I don't know, I try not to dwell on it too much. Just get her done. Now sometimes I hit an area where I just, I need to slow down and think it through, like here. Um, I'm trying to figure out if you would see the sort of, sort of neckline scarf thing. And I actually think it's probably just gonna be like a little bit. This is a pretty extreme perspective, so it's actually like a little challenging to draw because there's just so much foreshortening. Like if you look, I think these guys have these little goggles, which I just decided that these guys are gonna have little goggles when they're out and about in public. Um, And they have these sort of like full facial masks. This is the sort of undershirt that hangs out. And then leg, just blast right through this. I am horrible. I'm gonna draw a little, he's got a little crotch bulge there. He's not excited, he just, he's bulgy. He's just a bulgy person. I'm horrible with fabric. Um, I really need to spend like a week just really learning how to draw clothing. So this is horrible and I know it's horrible and I'm gonna look back on this and say wow that really sucks. But the pencils were super fast. The inks are super fast but slowly improving on the super fast pencils. And then the, uh, I try to draw like anywhere that there would be a seam I try to just give an impression so that it it helps inform the the perspective a little bit when you see this like side seam it just helps the leg read as dimensional I think a little more than it would otherwise and then these boots I've decided like have these little like ankle knobbies. I'm not sure where those come from. Probably saw ankle knobbies on a on a ninja or something. So yeah, almost done with this dude. Here's his exocortex tethers. And since the exocortex eye or are moving closer together so that they can communicate above, these lines are kind of getting like pulled around to the front of them. And as you can see, I put almost no thought into it. I mean I should probably use a French curve, but whatever. And then the last thing I do is just erase all the pencil lines. And I do a little bit of touch up with, um, with uh, like a white gel pen, clean up some of the mess, but uh, really not necessary. I could do all that in Photoshop since I'm gonna be digitizing these and coloring these in Photoshop anyway. Um, but this is basically my process for inking, for penciling and inking. And then the very last thing I do to finish out this page, I added some texture to the sky. This, I felt like this, this background was just a huge void and they, 
they felt kind of disassociated from the environment. So, you know, they're, they're standing very close to this huge wildfire just on the other side of the barrier. And so I decided to have like the, the ominous, like drifting, wafting, dark cloud behind them. To, and then there'll be kind of like the blue sky down here, but this is all gonna be like yellow, brown, ashtray, disgustingness up here. And then, uh, and then I decided to switch to a high view of the exocortex eye, <laughs> or exocortexes, exocorti. You know, I wanted to have, I wanted to show that while there's a conversation going on between the humans, that there's also an interaction going on between the cybernetic components that the humans are tethered to, and also show the, the approaching, the three approaching beans.